I have a question. What if all cubing software knew how to talk to each other? What if all the alg finding tools, all the timers, all the speed cubing apps, all the visualization tools, what if they all spoke the same formats so that they're more powerful together? Well, we want to make that possible. I'm Lucas, and welcome to the Twizzle Diaries. So what is Twizzle? It's a website at twizzle.net, part of a set of projects that I've been working on with Tom Rokiki, whom you might know from the quest for God's number. We've been keeping it under wraps so far because some important details still have to be figured out, but the goal of the Twizzle Diaries is to bring some of that out into the open and to talk about these details and hear from what you think as we move towards launching a complete version of twizzle.net. Twizzle is an abbreviation of Twisty Puzzle. The goal of Twizzle is to make it easy to interact with Twisty Puzzles, to understand them, and to communicate with others about them. Twizzle is also the name of an ice skating move where you spin on one leg while you still continue to travel down the ice. This is kind of apt for us because we're working with spinning puzzles and we want you to be able to just keep going with them. Let me explain. With a lot of cubing software, you can do some wonderful things, but a lot of them are only designed for a particular puzzle, or only have a partial understanding of how puzzles work. As soon as you have a question or speed cubing need outside of what the program was designed for, you have to go to a different program. Or often, there won't be a program, and you'd have to spend quite a lot of time writing your own. But the goal of Twizzle is to provide a foundation that can understand a lot of puzzles, and meet a lot of common needs. So you can go to Twizzle, do what you need, take it to another app, do something with a physical puzzle, whatever you need at the moment. You should be able to pick any WCA puzzle or any other twisty puzzle, and you should be able to get a virtual version of that puzzle. And you should be able to enter moves using whatever is most natural. On a computer, that might involve entering moves by dragging with a mouse or typing with a keyboard. On a phone, it could mean using swipe gestures to enter moves. If you have a Bluetooth smart puzzle, you should be able to record moves from that. And if you have a virtual reality headset, why not? Physical puzzles are 3D. Why can't virtual puzzles be 3D? So the point of all these options isn't to show off how many ways you can do it, but to offer whatever is the most intuitive. If you're on the go, your only device might be a phone, and you shouldn't have to spend two minutes trying to enter an ALG. You shouldn't have to type it out using a keyboard, for example. And if you're at your desk, you might have more options and be able to use something faster or more convenient. So what would you want to do with a virtual version of a puzzle? Well, if the puzzle is new to you, you might want to learn how to solve it. And if you're a speed cuber, you might want to get scrambles and time and record yourselves. And if you're learning to speed solve a puzzle, chances are you'll want to find some move sequences, something many of you will know as algorithms or algs. You should be able to find either existing algs, or you should be able to say, I want an alg that solves this case, and be able to choose from several options. This is a thing we can do, we just need to hook it together. You might be familiar with KSolve, and Tamar Kiki is working on a more general and more powerful version of a solver like that. So if you have an ALG or an entire solve, you should be able to take that and you should be able to share it. I have a site called alg.cubing.net, which has been running for several years, which a lot of people use to share algorithms and solves. And twizzle.net is sort of the successor to alg.cubing.net, but with a lot more functionality and supporting a lot more puzzles. I also want us to support more general ways of sharing, like a live stream of yourself, or maybe solving a puzzle together with somebody. So how do we make this all possible? Well, I like to think about it as three layers. First, there's a set of common formats for describing puzzles or algorithms that any app or library can use. And then cubing.js is a reference library that runs in all browsers on all devices that can let you work with these puzzles and algorithms and visualize them and play with them. And then Twizzle will use the main features of cubing.js as a convenient way to try out things with puzzles. So the idea is that cubing.js can be used on lots of sites, and twizzle.net will be uh, something that offers the most convenient, most general functionality. One critical part of this is that it's all open source. Everything is GPL licensed, which means that any project can use it as long as they also share their code for others to use. So if you write your own ALG trainer or timer and you want to work with ALGs or show some puzzles, you can just grab any parts of cubing.js that you need and it will automatically understand all the puzzles that we know how to work with. In the beginning, I asked, what if all cubing software knew how to talk to each other? I think we can get there 
And in a sense, these are the Twizzle Diaries, but it's not really about Twizzle. I want Twizzle to be a useful app for everyone, but if its accomplishment is that it brings cubing.js into the world, and that people use that to build much more powerful things, then I think I would consider that a success. I want us all to work together to build the best we can for the community. I hope you'll join me and Tom and everyone else in working on this. And you don't have to work on code. That's why I'm doing these videos. So in the coming videos, I'll show you more about cubing.js and Twizzle, and which parts we've got working well, and which details we need to figure out. And I'd love to hear your comments about what kinds of decisions we need to make for these uh, details or what kind of use cases we have to keep in mind so that it can be useful for everyone. Please uh, join me for that. And if you have any general thoughts or questions on the project, feel free to ask on this video. See you next time.